Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as a community of believers, as a community of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, we come together to celebrate these holy mysteries on the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The following are the intentions for this Mass. For the repose of Roy E. Litton. For the repose of Carmelo Rodriguez. And for the repose of Dale Hay. Also, we have a special intention in thanksgiving for our choir, our folk choir, the 1045 Mass Choir, who are celebrating 50th anniversary, 50 years of ministry, we give thanks to them and we call upon our Lord so that he may bestow all kinds of blessings upon each one of them. Let us prepare. We have come to the house of the Lord. Let us prepare to meet him in word and sacrament as we ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you call us to die to self and sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us when we fall, when we fall and repent. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us life through the blood of your cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to an everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And together we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp. 
so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha called her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin, and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of those little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hospitality was regarded as a sacred duty in the time of Jesus, and it continues to be among many nowadays. When we are hospitable to others, we demonstrate who we are to our neighbor, and ultimately we demonstrate who we are to our God. The statement behind an act of generosity is not what we have but who we are. If hospitality is given freely and expecting nothing in exchange, the results can be of a lavish nature. In the first reading of this Sunday, we have a prominent woman and her husband welcoming the prophet Elijah. Most likely for many years of marriage, they waited eagerly for a child. At the time of Jesus, children were considered religiously a blessing. Not having children culturally meant God's disapproval due to the fact that it was the duty of a married couple to populate the earth. Not having descendants meant not fulfilling the marriage or the marriage duty and as a sign of not being generous. That was the case with the couple of Shunem. Yet, they were righteous people. They were good people, kind and generous. Out of the kindness of their hearts, they extended their hospitality to the prophet Elisha. And out of God's grace and bounty, they were rewarded with the gift of a son. They did what they had to do. And in such, they built for Elijah a room in their house and as a sign of respect to God's representative. And notice how this gesture of generosity provoked this abundant blessing to this couple. In order for us to be generous, we have to be just. This involves doing the right thing at the right moment and for the right reasons. The gospel urges us to become just or righteous by putting our priorities in order. Our priorities, what's important to us. For us Christians, for us Catholics, our first love must be God. God is to be our beginning and our earthly end our horizon and our heavenly future, our center at all times. Out of this relationship with God, we develop the capacity to love others. You see, if we don't love others, we don't know God. 
Therefore, I will be a good husband because I love God. I will be a good friend because I love God. I will be a good daughter, co-worker, parishioner because I love God. There's no competition between these kinds of love. Huh? The love of God is the motor, the source, the primary reason. The love of others is the result. As we do this, we become generous without expecting anything, just the welfare of the beloved we give. In my opinion, a big problem with our nation, with, among many people, is that we're not generous. You know, sometimes we think twice to get out of our ways in doing a favor or in doing an act of charity or in doing something that may inconvenience us in terms of our time, resources, what have you. So that bankruptcy of generosity is a main, main, main problem in our society. But not for us Catholics, not for us Christians. We have to give. And we give by knowing that anything given freely, generously, and with the right intention is never lost. Never. On the contrary, God in his infinite abundance bestows on those who have loved all kinds of blessings. When we give our time, when we give an advice, our resources, and who we are to others, we become imitators of God. A clear example is the fact that we're celebrating this anniversary for the choir. You know, 50 years of singing to the Lord. 50 years of helping the people of St. Aloysius to pray through word and through song. When we are generous, it's because we have loved. Therefore, let us continue giving. Let us continue loving. Let us never get tired of giving and loving, allowing God's mercy to manifest its generosity among us. Amen. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is the faithful High Priest who knows our weakness, 
we approach him now with confidence with our deeds. Please let us respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we die to sin and live for God in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the governors and lawmakers, that they respect freedom of religion in all their votes and decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we prepare to celebrate Independence Day, that we may be thankful for all who have given service to our country and to keep it free. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those men who will be ordained as priests for the Archdiocese of Chicago, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, that they may rejoice in the heavenly banquet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Certainly for the intentions of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Help us by your grace to take up our cross and follow you every day of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. gifts 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift Let them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Agnes, Saint Fidelis, Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. point, I invite you to make your spiritual communion.
of age or older, you can still volunteer, so long as you do not have any underlying conditions and are good of health. Thanks for your generous support of our parish. If you wish to continue doing so during our closure, you may do so by mailing in your offerings, but please do not send cash through the mail. But instead, register online at givecentral.org, or you can also text Sunday to 773-389-1059. Your donations are greatly appreciated. Please continue to join us every Sunday during this quarantine for Mass on our Facebook page and also our YouTube page titled Santa Lucia's Knights of Columbus. Have a wonderful Sunday. Of course, as I mentioned in the homily, we need to be generous. And this is an opportunity for many of our parishioners to be generous with their time, with their resources, with their talents as they support this initiative of reopening our Sunday Masses. We count on you. Secondly, again, happy anniversary, my dear choir, 50 years of serving the Lord. Thirdly, tomorrow, Monday, eight men shall be ordained, send of them for the Archdiocese of Chicago. May the good Lord continue giving us priests, because where there is a priest, there is the Eucharist. And of course, don't give up, don't give up, never give up. The Lord be with you. And, and with his spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is then does go into the world glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.